Hey guys, Logan Battles here, and welcome back to my Harry Potter series of reviews. I have a ton of blasts reviewing the Sorcerer's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets, and now we're moving on to the third film in the Harry Potter franchise, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which by the way is one of the fewest movies to prove that third installments of a, of a particular movie franchise aren't always terrible. So Harry, Ron, and Hermione return to Hogwarts for their third magic-filled year, and Harry comes face to face with danger yet again, this time in the form of a escaped convict named Sirius Black, and he turns to Professor Lupin, who later on in the film is revealed to be a werewolf, uh, for help. And this film is not directed by Chris Columbus, who directed the first two. It's uh, then directed by Alfonso Cuaron, who, by the way, gave us one of the most beautiful-looking Harry Potter films I have ever seen. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful looking films in the entire Harry Potter franchise. Uh, I just could not believe how fantastic this film looks from the cinematography standpoint to the lighting standpoint to the, to everything else in general about the filmmaking uh, behind this film. It looks so immaculate. So this is the first film where Harry uh, finally has had it with uh, people like the Dursleys and Draco Malfoy uh, for uh, giving him crap. Uh, like he has had enough uh, with uh, taking crap from them at, at all. Like he has had it, uh, doesn't want to take any more of it and just uh, gets at them whenever they try to get into Harry. And I really want to say this. this is, uh, there were a few moments throughout this entire film that, that made me f feel like I'm watching a horror film. Um, even though this is not a, technically and overall a horror film, it definitely uh, the feeling that I got after re-watching this film, it really made me feel that way. Just based on the moments that were put in this film that made me feel like I was watching a horror film. For example, we get a scene where we were introduced to the Dementor on the train, uh, which by the way, that scene looks so beautiful. It looks so fantastic. I could not even believe how, uh, how much I forgot about how great this movie is. And the scene where Harry Potter uh, walks uh, through the hallway uh, at night uh, using what is called the Marauder's Map, where he uses to see uh, what people are doing inside Hogwarts and where they're going in Hogwarts. And the fight scene with uh, Professor Lupin, who again turned out to be uh, the werewolf, uh, going up against Sirius Black as the dog. Uh, they have a fight scene, which was awesome, by the way. Just moments like that really remind me uh, or made me think that this is a horror film, even though it's actually not. And the special effects have highly improved over the first two, uh, especially with the Quidditch scene. Uh, it looks uh, a lot better than the uh, Quidditch scenes in the first two. It has more depth, it, it has more richness to it, and it's a lot more intense than the first uh, Quidditch scenes in the first two films. And this movie also is definitely more funnier than the first two. Now, this film didn't overuse its humor to ruin the tone, uh, but it does uh, make a good balance between the humor and the seriousness, which, by the way, is necessary uh, uh, with, with the whole story. It just has a good balance between the two. There were humorous moments to be found. This one scene where this woman was uh, opening a door and some monster inside of it roared and she was like, okay, I'll head to another room. Or the scene where Harry and his friends eat these beans that give them various animal noises to make. Or the scene uh, with Professor Snape closing all the windows, pulling the screen down and tell the students to turn to page 394. These hilarious moments, like I uh, said uh, already, uh, gave the film more levity, and that is something that I thought uh, uh, this film pulled off so well. Michael Gambon was the replacement for Richard Harris after his death, uh, which uh, rest in peace to Richard Harris. Uh, but honestly, I find Michael Gambon to be the better portrayal of of Albus Dumbledore than uh, Richard Harris because Michael Gambon uh, brought in so, uh, something more to uh, his character than Richard Harris has, which is, yes, on the outside, uh, Albus Dumbledore seems like this very calm and very great, 
old man that uh, you actually want to spend time with, while on the inside, uh, where he doesn't reveal too much, uh, he's much more powerful than he is sh uh, seen publicly. And that is something, and that is the, one of the reasons why I love Michael Gambit as Professor Dumbledore more than Richard Harris. And also, this is the first film in the franchise where we actually get to see Hagrid teach students, and that gives us the introduction to the incredible Hippocrive, which is a uh, half a bird, half horse a creature uh, that is such an excellent uh, creature. I just love uh, the Hippocrif uh, that Hagrid and names Bugbee, um, which is a hilarious name, by the way. Uh, but anyway, the Hippocrif, it looks so incredible. I love this creature. Uh, this is one of those creatures in the entire Harry Potter franchise that I wish was real, but no, it's fake. And let's talk about Gary Oldman as Sirius Black. He plays the character so perfectly uh, that I don't find I couldn't find a single actor that could replace him as Sirius Black. He was perfect for this role. And this guy is an innocent man. Uh, he was wrong and was sentenced. Uh, in a not-so-right way. And he, in one scene, he offers Harry Potter to live with him, which uh, uh, which makes the Dursleys, uh, who are Harry's guardians, uh, horrible guardians, by the way, uh, it makes the, he makes the guardians look so bad, which they were bad already throughout the first three films, but uh, he made them look even more bad. <laughs> And guys, when the back-in-time sequence happens within the third act of this movie, I really couldn't help uh, but say that this is the second-best Harry Potter film uh, in the entire franchise for me personally. Uh, the back-in-time sequence, oh my god, it looks so focused. There is something very special about this back-in-time sequence. It's very focused. It doesn't feel like it has a, a distraction from someone or something that interferes with it, uh, within it. Uh, there's just nothing about that. Uh, this back-in-time sequence has made Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban one of the best films in the entire franchise, for me personally. And that, combined with John Williams' uh, magnificent score and uh, the whole finale, which by the way, was so epic. Uh, I just, it's almost indescribable uh, for me to say how awesome this movie is. Um, just basically saying that this movie was awesome, just the way that things are. And honestly, after rewatching this movie, I don't, I didn't have very much issues with it, honestly. And I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban a Platinum Medal of Honor. This film was a lot better than I remember it being. Uh, I honestly could not believe uh, that I watched an incredible film that has stood the test of time, and the special effects look so incredible. Uh, they still hold up, I believe, 14 years later, which is insanity. Anyway, guys, that is my review for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, look out for my upcoming review for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. If you guys enjoyed my review, please click the like button, and if you have already watched this movie, comment below and let me know what you think of it. If you enjoyed what you've seen here and you want to see future videos from me, please press up there to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great week, Battle Squad, and as always, fight the good fight.